Hello and welcome to AEF TV in association with Angelati. And uh, I'm joined now by Nick Thompson, who's the CEO of the Tony Blair Africa Governance uh, Initiative. Uh, Nick, thanks for making the time to join us. Uh, uh, the tail end of the day of what, what's <laughs> been a very long day. Um, and we were just talking off air and you were saying about the, uh, 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 the session you just had mm. where well, one of the things you were pulling out is th this, this need for um, sort of maybe consistent, strong governance mm. uh, uh, to give companies the uh, uh, comfort to uh, or the, the ability to invest or, uh, yeah. and, and that comfort. Uh, which seems to be a running theme throughout our uh, interviews that we've had as well. Yeah. So, w w what are you guys doing on that? Well, what's your sort of take on uh, uh, th that discussion as well? Yeah, I'm, I think that's exactly right. Um, so, perhaps a word on us first. We're the Tony Blair African Governance Initiative. It is a bit of a mouthful. A yeah. AGI. A AGI. <laughs> AGI Let's just easier. stick to that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, we're a UK charity that provides support to governance to African leaders in seven African countries focused on the centre of government and focused on what we call effective governance, this question of how do you get things done when you're in power? How do you, uh, from starting with a, the vision that you've come in and you've won the election on, how do you turn that into a set of priorities? And how do you turn those priorities into programmes with milestones that can be delivered and that can be tracked? What system of government able to do that? So that's what we do. As I say, working in uh, seven different sectors. But I think that does link very uh, strongly to the the, the, the question you ask, and as you say, the sort of theme running through the conference, uh, conference, which is very much about investment, how do you generate investment, how is Africa going to fill this financing gap to really get the in energy infrastructure it needs. And a part of my response to that would be you get it through government leadership. You get it through le governments that can set a direction, set out a clear strategy for the sector for what they want to achieve, sending the signals to in both the investors and the development community that people and, can get behind. And, and why, why do you think that government leadership is not happening? Is it, is, is it because we've got a, a, a governments of different maturity or is it actually a, a, a sort of skills issue, a knowledge issue, an experience issue? Uh, I think there is a skills and knowledge issue and I think there is certainly um, a challenge uh, coming out of that to the international community about how it provides meaningful support to African governments. I think partly because it's hard to do. Uh, and I think it's it's sort of fair to acknowledge that. Uh, prioritization is one of these, everyone would support prioritization, but really what you're saying is political choices. It's about making political choices. And making political choices is hard because you have winners and you have losers. Um, so I think it's understanding that political choice that's at the heart of it, providing support to governments in a way that enables them to make that political choice and that then backs the leadership when they make it. Uh, I think part of the challenge is um, is governments being sort of bombarded with different interests. This should be a priority, that should be a priority. And, and, and those interests are at conflict sometimes yeah. because you've got, uh, you know, uh, especially in uh, uh, Africa, you've got a, a very diverse rural uh, economies or little pockets of it and then suddenly, because some of, some of the, it almost it seems to me quite, well, I can understand why it is, but it does seem to be quite one-dimensional that, you know, okay, we will invest uh, uh, if you can get the guarantee of uh, market rate tariffs mm. and billing mm. uh, uh, and that side of things. Mm. Where in all of this is the social equation mm. and, uh, and giving that access? So have you seen models that, that try and mm. reconcile those two? Mm. Well, I think the Minister for um, uh, Minister from Botswana in the session we just had uh, on how you align interests in the uh, natural resources and power sector spoke quite powerfully to this point. That, and he say it's, he's got choices to make. He's got choices as to whether you prioritise the coal sector or um, PV, as we were talking about in the session. He's got choices about where national infrastructure gets built, what rates to set tariffs at, etc., etc., etc. And all of those choices are difficult, both because they are technically difficult and because they are politically difficult, and will create winners and losers but that's that's his job mm. that's what he has to do that's mm. what he will stand and fall by as, as the minister mm. uh, and he's sort of made made a very they have a very clear set of plans and very clear set of uh, ideas and that's that's the sort of leadership that I think mm. Africa needs to see and so what what does a institution like yours mm. uh, uh, bring to the party to help sort of solve some of those yeah. issues uh, uh, and things like that. And 
what qualifies you to bring that to the party as well? Yeah, good question. Um, so AGI works in two ways. Uh, we're providing, we're about providing practical support to leaders in working through and making these decisions and then seeing them implemented. We work by teams of professionals on the ground, from one or two people in some of our smaller programs to six or eight uh, in the larger ones, Rwanda and Liberia in particular. Uh, and we work through an ongoing relationship between our patron, Tony Blair, former Prime Minister in the UK, obviously, and the President or Prime Minister or the Minister in question. Uh, and through that, we seek to work with and understand the political economy, these sorts of political decisions that they're making. Not to act in a political way, that's not our role. These are decisions rightly for the government of the day, that's where the ownership and leadership starts from. But if you, if you can't understand that political economy, then I don't think you can really provide practical support. So you go in, have a look around and, and give dispassionate advice saying, right, here is what needs to be done. And, and then the decision, they then make the decision to either ignore your advice or, or take it, I suppose. They, they, they then make the decision, exactly. We're, we're providing advice on the process as much as on the policy. Right. So we wouldn't be saying, in your energy sector, you should do uh, coal versus PV. That's not, that's not our place. So that's the decision for the government. We will help them in making that decision. We will help them in identifying priorities and saying that you do need a clear set of priorities if you want to make change happen because uh, it, it's a saying of, uh, Tony's that's slightly flippant but we still stick to it. it's best to get three things done than have 15 things on the agenda mm. so we'll work with them to say you do need to prioritize once you set those priorities let's then work to turn it into a set of milestones that can be broken down that can be tracked and let's work on the system that does that how are you as the leader whether you're the president of the country or the Ministry of Energy what's the mechanism by which you're communicating with the, the people out in the field the people in the ministry or out in the field who need to make things happen so, that line of so it's really about that transparency and b building that uh, uh, through. So we're kind of coming to the end of our time. I know it's a very short interview and there's uh, like a whole bunch of other questions that come to mind, <laughs> sure. but it'll take us in a different direction sure. for another time perhaps. But if I can ask you a situational question, because we are here at AEF, uh, uh, you have spent the day here, you've had a chance to absorb it all. Um, if I can turn you into a commentator for a second, and mm. if I can ask you, so, okay, so what, what are some of the, the, the things that you would pick out and say, oh, I'm really excited that this conversation is happening, or, 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 or that aspect of it? Yeah, I think that um, uh, if I could answer that in one word, I'd say it's about partnerships. I think in so many, as you say, this is a sort of question for another day, but in so many, touching on so many of the question, issues you've raised and questions you've asked is this fact that there needs to be more partnerships working at different ways and at different levels, whether it's between natural resources and the power sector, whether that's between uh, sort of national infrastructure and local community initiatives in order to get the projects going and get buy-in leadership from the national level, but buy-in at the local level. We need more partnerships, more sets of actors and more uh, sort of routes for finance and I think that sense of from a conference like this with so many people at it you get that sense of partnership. Well that, that is kind of palpable with uh, you know I, I've personally seen a number of conversations happen where I've known the individuals involved and I'm like hey, well, it's great that those connections are taking place. Exactly. Uh, uh, exactly. Nick I'm sorry we've come to the end of our time uh, 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 but uh, uh, short, uh, short and sweet and, uh, <laughs> and I hope a good commentary and I hope we can uh, maybe uh, invite you to contribute throughout the year Certainly. as well it'd be uh, it'd be good to do that and uh, thank you as well to uh, for watching and uh, this has been a wrap from day one at AEF <laughs> TV so thanks again Nick thank you okay thanks